And now it's time for the further adventures of Big John and Sparky. Today's chapter is entitled, Yuki Cracks Up. I'm sure that many of you boys and girls have heard about the famous Indianapolis 500, the Memorial Day speed race at uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. It's one of the greatest sporting events of uh, the United States. Back in 1953, Yuki had invented a new type engine for a racing automobile, and he took it to Indianapolis to get in the race that spring. In yesterday's chapter, you heard how he qualified at 142 miles an hour. Today, he's working on his, working on his car. Let's listen. Hey, Yuki, how come you're working on your race auto's motors? Uh, are you having uh, motor trouble or something? Oh, no, lad. I'm just working here, adjusting a few things here and adjusting a few things there, trying to get a little extra speed out of her. What's the matter, you? Aren't you satisfied with the speed you're getting out of your A&D special now? Well, Mayor, as you will recall, in the time trial yesterday, they got only a little better than 142 miles an hour out of this here bucket of bolts. Gonna have to do better than that if I'm gonna win the 500-mile race on Memorial Day. You mean to say that you think the average speed in that there race Saturday is gonna be better than 142 miles an hour? Well, maybe not the average speed, but there are going to be times when some of them there fellas out there in the track will be doing better at 142, I bet you. Yeah, wouldn't be the least bit surprised, Mayor. This race gets faster and faster every year. Well, it's 100% correct. And if I'm going to win, which I'm going to do, I'll have to get more than 142 miles an hour out of this here race auto of mine, and that's more than I'm getting now, you know. Wow, 142 miles an hour is pretty fast. Pretty fast, and boy, that's putting it mildly. Now, if you fellas will excuse me, I've got a few more adjustments to make on the motor here, so I will get busy. Yeah, okay, well, we won't we won't bother you. I know you're busy. Come on, Mayor, Sparky, let's walk over and watch the cars that are racing around the track now. Yeah, that's a good idea. Boy, look at that. Did you see that last uh, uh, auto that was speeding past here, Big John? He's, he's really going, huh? Well, what do you think? How, how fast was he driving? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't paying much attention. Just keep your ears open, lad. The judge up there in the official's booth will make the announcement over the public address system in just a couple minutes. Oh, is that a time trial? Yeah, sure thing. Oh, yeah, look. See, the judge is picking up the microphone to make the announcement. Listen now, lad. I'm on Bruce Brown, driving the Boston Piston Ring Special, 138.327 miles per hour. Nice going, Bruce. 138 what? 138.327. That's a little over 138 miles an hour. Well, that still isn't faster than 142 miles an hour that Yuki drove in his time trial. So far, Yuki has had the fastest time trial of any car. Yep, and I'm telling you that these here modern race autos really go fast. But for thrills, oh, for thrills, give me the good old days. Back when I was driving in the big auto races. Tell me about it, Mayor. Tell you about it? <laughs> Now, lad, you don't want to hear about the time I drove a race auto. Now, <laughs> do you, lad? Sure. <laughs> Are you real sure? Yeah, sure, I'm real sure. <laughs> well, all righty, lad. <laughs> Since you're just begging me to talk about something of which I am extremely naturally modest, I'll, I'll tell you all about it. Mayor, you know that you were just waiting for such an opportunity. <laughs> now, Buster, the lad wants to hear about my experiences when I was a race auto driver. <laughs> He wants to hear about the days when I was the greatest race auto driver in the face of this here world. Oh, lad, if it wasn't because I was so modest, I could tell you some fancy spine-tingling stories. Well, go, go ahead and tell me one, Mayor. Yeah, Mayor, go ahead. Toss aside your modesty and tell Sparky about your hair-raising adventures as uh, an auto race driver. Well, Buster, you need just a joshing when you say I had some hair-raising adventures. Let me, let, let me tell you about the time... <clears throat> There was that there race I drove in back in 1920. That was a big 500 uh, Memorial Day race right here in Indianapolis. That's the one that uh, Louis Chevrolet won, you know. Yeah, tell me about that one, Mayor. How come you didn't win? Well, don't you remember on the 45th lap, I went into a spin and I hit that there wall down there by the far turn. I broke an axle. 
had to retire from the race after having an average speed of 92 miles an hour. That doesn't seem very fast to me. Oh, lad, you seem to forget back in them days automobiles didn't go as fast as they do right now. <laughs> Why, the fellow that won that there race only went 89 miles an hour. But anyway, let me tell you about that there race, lad. Well, go ahead, Mayor. I'm listening. Well, as you may or may not know, back in them there days, two fellers sat in a race auto when they raced around the track, you see. You mean they had two drivers in each race auto? No, 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 not drivers. A driver and his mechanic. The mechanic sat in the race auto right alongside the driver, you see. Well, why was that, Mayor? Well, I don't rightly know. I never could understand it, lad. Um, I was again it all the time. But uh, anyway, the feller that uh, rode with me in my car was a mechanic by the name of Whitey Schneiders. And uh, what old Whitey didn't know about the automobile, nobody knew. <laughs> and uh, there was old Whitey Schneiders and me... Uh, racing around the track in our race auto, the Heartburn Gasoline Special. You see. <laughs> the Heartburn Gasoline Special. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a funny name. Yeah, well, I know it was, but it was a fast car. Uh, by the time we'd gone around the track uh, ten times, we was already leading the rest of the cars by two laps. You mean you'd gone around the track ten times while the other cars had only gone around eight? Boy, you really must have been traveling. Well, Buster, I was known in them days as fearless plump front. <laughs> I... Yeah, yeah, it was crazy, but I tell you, I took risks that no other race automobile driver would ever take. That's what I mean about having them hair-raising adventures. Why, Buster, there was a wreck in one of the turns, and four cars were piled up. Did I go around them? Did you? No, sir. <laughs> Did I go through them? Did you? Nope. <laughs> no. Well, Mayor, what'd you do? I went over them, lad. Made my race auto fly right through the air. Oh, now, Mayor, how could you do a thing like that? That's impossible. You seem to forget, Buster, that I was a very skillful driver. I could do things with an automobile that nobody else on Earth could do. How'd you make the uh, race auto fly through the air over the wreck? Well, see, I was going at top speed, and I slammed on the brake so fast and so hard that the front end of my race auto raised up into the air like a bucking bronco. And whilst it was like that, I jammed my foot down on the gas pedal and the wheel spun around, the car jumped forward through the air, and I went right over the wrecked cars, <laughs> just a flying over it like a bird. <laughs> and what do you think happened? What? My car landed against that there wall down there, and I broke the axle and had to retire from the race. I would have won that race if it hadn't been for that wall getting in the way. Yeah, no doubt. Now, listen, just to show you... You talk about hair-raising adventures. <laughs> you know how uh, the magazines uh, uh, show pictures of how race auto drivers are asking for their favorite candy bar or breakfast food or a cup of their favorite coffee after winning a race? Yeah, I know. They show things like that in the ads. Well, <laughs> as we climbed out of our race auto, what do you think was the first thing that my mechanic, old Whitey Schneiders, asked for? What do you think? What did he ask for, Mayor? A barber. He wanted a haircut. You see, when that race started, old Whitey was as bald as a bowling ball. But during the race, there were so many exciting things happened there, so many hair-raising things happened, that by the time we got to ten times around the track, he had grown himself a full head of hair. Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> Hey, there comes Yuki in his race auto. Look at that. I didn't see him roll his car out onto the track. He must have finished working on his motor. Yeah. Hi, Yuki. Ah. Well, there he goes. Yeah. He's going he's to take another time trial, I think. Uh, Buster, I don't think you believe the story about uh, that there race I won. I mean, when I was in. Well, in the first place, Mayor, uh, that part of the story where you say you made your race auto jump over the four wrecked cars. Yeah. That's impossible. <laughs> if you jammed on the brakes... While you were going 92 miles an hour, the front end of the car would not go up in the air. If anything, the back end of the car would go up off the ground. Oh, no. you just don't understand uh, race autos, Buster. I, I can see that. Yeah, you okay, you're going around that track. He's over on the other side already. I, had, I only had brakes on the back wheels, and the motor was also in the rear end of the race auto, too. I was the first auto uh, driver to have an auto with a motor in the rear, and that made the front end lighter than the back, you see. Uh-huh. I see. So? Hey, Yuki's going around the far turn. Look at him coming this way. Boy, is he ever going. Buster, you don't, you don't by any chance think that the story I'm telling you about that there race is not true, do you? Well, let's just say perhaps you daydreamed a little, Mayor. Oh, my. Look, here comes Yuki down the track past the judge's stand. He's 
really going. Wow. Here he comes. Wow, and there he goes. Woo wee. Hey, look out. Yuki seems to be skidding. I think his car's out of control. Oh, there was oil on the track. He hit it when he tried to stop. Oh, the car turned around. The rear end's going to hit the wall. Wow. Come on, let's get over there and see if he's all right. Oh, oh man, I hope he's not hurt. Oh, hey, Yuki. Yuki. Yuki, are you all right? We must be big giants finding out of his race, huh? Oh, Yuki. Yuki, are you all right? I'm all right, lad. Oh, I'm all right. But look at my race auto. Uh-oh, it looks bad, Yuki. I ain't mistaken that their back axle is all busted there. Oh, my. Does that mean that you won't be able to race in the Memorial Day race Saturday? Well, not if I can't get this here car fixed up by that lad. Oh, boy, if it isn't always something. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, poor old Yuki. You can just see how he just stands there looking at the broken axle on his automobile kit. Oh, well, if there's anything old Yuki wanted to do, it was to race the car in the Memorial Day race here in Indianapolis this coming Saturday. Well, he said maybe he'd be able to fix his car by then. I sure hope he can. And listen, tomorrow I'm going to race in the in the midget car race for kids. <laughs> Boy, that'll be fun. Hey, I hope you're going to be here to watch me race. I hope so. I'll see you then. So long.